What's going on guys? Josh here from Polymathics. And today I want to talk about a subject that I'm sure most of the younger cats in the audience are familiar with. And that is confidence versus cockiness. And the reason why this is coming up is because this is something that I struggled with in my teenage years for sure and even in my early 20s. And I think it's a common problem among the younger guys Girls can have this too, but guys in particular fall victim to this because <sighs> men in particular, not just men, but younger guys in particular seem to um, have this like alpha dog mentality, like they have to be on top, they have to be the best at everything. And as you get older and you grow wiser, you see the nuances and the and and the the truth is not necessarily that you have to be the best. You have to be your best. But that's a whole topic for another day. Um, anyway, so this was something I struggled with. This is something that um, I see a lot of younger dudes struggling with. Um, and so I want to kind of, you know, let's let's talk about it, right? What, what are the issues here? So and to bring it to like to really illustrate what the difference between confidence and cockiness um, I'm gonna use an old Korean idiom and I learned this and I believe it was like 2005 2006 so it stuck with me for a long time um, and forgive me if I butcher this it's been a while since I spoke Korean but it's um Harukangaji ga horengi musunjul morunda so what that means is the day old pup doesn't know to fear the tiger and basically as you can probably already guess the the connotation is that the pup is like so amped up and he's barking and yipping and and he feels really cocky he thinks that he has the ability to take on the world and to an extent that's good everybody needs that like chip on their shoulder to kind of keep them going so that they don't become complacent or stagnant however we have to be careful because when we come across a tiger we could get eaten alive and the tiger on the other hand has many kills under his belt he is he is very sure of himself he knows what he can do and he doesn't even sweat that little puppy and so that's another very good um, illustration of the difference between s someone who's, who's cocky and someone who's not. Is like most of the time, someone who's cocky is like beating on their chest, making a lot of noise, but it's all bark and no bite. Someone who's confident doesn't have to go around making all of these claims and boast boosting themselves up because their actions speak for themselves. If if you're in the case of the tiger, if you're a killer, everybody knows you're a killer. You have to go barking around, right? One roar and animals go flying. It's the same thing. Now the question is, how does someone who has little to no life experience build that confidence of a tiger and stop yipping around like a cocky little one day old pup? Or an air, you know, that's arrogance at its finest. And the key is that there's two, there's several things that come into this, but I'm going to break it down into two main points. One is you have to become an expert in whatever it is that you're trying to do. You have to dive deep into the literature and educate yourself on whatever it is. And, and it's not just about reading either. Um, it's about physically experiencing these things on a visceral level and also an emotional level so that they stick with you and so a really good example of this is someone who wants to be uh, a physical trainer and wants to be like one of the top physical trainers in the world they not only have to know all of the literature and probably have a few certifications under their belt but they also need to look the part they need to viscerally um, and physically have felt what it's like to 
um, to build all of those muscles and and go through each of the stages of you know you know novice beginner novice intermediate advanced master they need to they need to know how that process goes and hopefully have struggled with it a little bit so that there's this emotional connection to the failures that they had and if we go back to the tiger it's the same thing right not every tiger has a kill on its first or second try right it takes several attempts a lot of hunger right they have to feel that hunger they have to understand what it is to fail in order to finally succeed and so um so for example so going with the uh the physical trainer bit right you know they have to they have to physically have gone through it emotionally experienced the same difficulties that their their um their uh clientele are going to go through as they go th you know advance through the stages and then um, they have to have a good logical understanding of the literature that that surrounds it you know it's one thing to know you know to tell your clients you have to eat right and exercise but while your client is eating or sorry while your client is exercising um, say their their shoulders right you need to be able to tell them like what part of the deltoid they're working and why you know why this movement is better than that movement and why you know keeping your elbow in line your wrist in line with your elbow is going to prevent injury things of that nature same thing with the food aspect so the point is diving really deep and constantly immersing yourself the tiger doesn't just learn how to make a kill and then stop that's a lifelong process and every kill is different every kill brings with it its own challenges and um, creativity on the tiger's part to like make it happen there are some fundamentals that were will constantly remain the same but each kill is going to require a bit of adaptability where the tiger has to kind of think outside of what what's happened in the past and so so someone who is confident builds on those experiences both educates themselves and goes out there and gets experience and the great thing is, it doesn't matter what kind of experience it is. It can be failures, it can be successes. And a lot of times the failures are better. Are better um, because they stick with us longer. right? All of our insecurities that we have about every time we fail, they sear into us that we never want that to happen again. And, um, and the pup, the pup just doesn't have that. And so what happens is these, these guys or girls who are cocky and go around banging their chests or being all loud, you know, they may get a quick win, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, in relationships, you know, a guy might get the girl the first night, but that, that it's not a consistent way. It's not a formula for consistent success. And <clears throat> also it can lead, lead that person into a false sense of security um, especially if the girl or guy right the relationship doesn't pan out like um, and that's why I'm saying like you have to just build upon experiences now to go back to the cockiness factor we're all cocky in one manner shape or form at some point in our lives could have been when we we're really young could be now the thing is cockiness in very small doses very very small doses where it's more inward turn than outward turn is okay if you pump yourself up and say like this is something I can do that's fine that's I wouldn't even call it cockiness that's that's um like self oh why am I not thinking of the word um it's a form of confidence though right it's seeing yourself in the future achieving things and knowing that there's going to be a process to get there it's when you start bringing that that fake energy into the outside world and portraying it on other people that <laughs> people are just gonna start rolling their eyes and it's a very unattractive trait just like someone whining or complaining all the time nobody wants to be around a chatter someone who's who's constantly talking shit 
and not not ever backing it up. So, anyways, hope this has been helpful. Um, if if you get a lot of eye rolls because you're because uh, you're a little bit more cocky than confident, then just self-evaluate, right? This is this is how we learn and grow and become confident. We have to find the flaws within ourselves and then purge them as best we can. That's how we grow and then end up finding more flaws, bigger flaws to clean up. And each time we purge, we just grow stronger and stronger. So anyways, hope this has been helpful. I'll catch you in later videos. Take it easy.